In this part of the lesson, we're going to look at mean and median, and this brings to mind one of my favorite cartoons. So you have X bar, if you recall, that's the mean. My ex-girlfriend thinks I'm mean, and my current one thinks I'm average. Maybe you've set your bar too high. Get it? Hopefully you get it. All right, so we have two measures that we can use to describe the center of data. Data. The first one is the median, and you learned about that one a long time ago in middle school. It may be elementary, actually. It's the centermost point that splits the data into two equal groups when you put the data in order. So you order the data from least to greatest. You remove an equal number of points from both ends till you have one or two data points in the center. Now, if you have one data point in the center, that's your median. If you have two data points, then it is the average of the two data points. That number right there would be your median. So that basically it's either the, it's the centermost point, or if there's not one single centermost point, it's the center between the two centermost points. Now let's look at an example. The weightlifting team had bench presses of 115, 137, 160, and 89. What is the median score? So put them in order and then take off, uh, I like to take them off equally from each end, and I have two data points in the center, which means I have to take the average of them. So I'm going to go ahead and average those two, and I get 126, which would be halfway between 115 and 137. Now a fifth member of the weightlifting team also completed, if the new median score is 123, how much did the fifth team member bench press? So that new score could go anywhere before the 89, after it, after the 115, after the 137, or after the 160. Well, if we're going to have five data points, and the media, median will be the centermost point, so it's probably going to be right there in the center, 123. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at a mean. Here I have um, four groups of apples, and then I arrange, rearrange them into equal size groups. So you can another way of looking at the mean is when you just uh, put the same amount of points or whatever it is, the values, so every group has an equal value. The mathematical procedure for doing it is to total the data points, divide them into equal numbers so that each one would have the same value. So add them up, divide by how many groups there are. There is a cool way to do it. If you use this picture, re remembering that you can rearrange. So for example, I can put an apple here, and I could put an apple there, and I could put that apple there. So let me show you. You don't have to do this, but it's really kind of cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the, I have seven here. So students were polled on how many people lived in their house with the following results. Um, and you can see I've got a seven and I've got a three. So I know those aren't the average. I'm going to rearrange a little. So I'm going to take two off the seven make that a 5, and I'll put them over here, make the 3 a 5. So now it's 5, 4, 6, 3, 5, 6, 5, 5, 6, 5. Well, I still have a 6, so I can go ahead and take a 1 off of that 6 and put it um, on the 3, and I can take 1 off of that 6 and put it on that 4, and I can take 1 off of that 6 and put it on that five, uh, 4 to make it 5. So now that I have equal groups of 5, my average is 5. But most of you are like, oh, that was not fun. Yeah, you can do the usual method. Add them up, divide by how many uh, groups there are, and uh, you get five. So that works too. Not as much fun though. So another way to look at the mean is to make a dot plot of the household data. I know that's not exactly the same scale that you have on your example. I actually used uh, staplet.com, which is really very handy. And I thought, hmm, where would the balancing point be on this data? I obviously it wouldn't be over here and not over here. So I might be able to balance it at five. And if you look at it, kind of eyeballing it, that might work. And we know it will because we actually found the average and it was five. So that is your balancing point for your data. So Tabitha has a mean of 78 on five assignments. She wants to get a wristband. So what does she need to make on the next assignment to bring her mean up to an 80? Now, do you think I ever get questions like this? What do I need to make on this to get that? Of course I do. Now you, I'm going to teach you how to do it on your own. So for a group of assignments of equal weights, all I'd have to do is figure out, well, she's going to have an average of 80 
on six assignments. So that means when I add up all the assignments together, I should get 480 points. I know she has an average of 78 on five, so she has a total of 390 points because 78 times five. How far short am I? 90 points. So if she makes a 90 on the next assignment, then her average will go up to an 80. Now, uh, <coughs> let's say we compare the mean and the median, all right? And I did a survey of how many countries various students had visited, and I got the following results. So the mean, I just add them all up. This one, the rearranging trick doesn't work so well because I'm going to get an ugly answer. So yeah, we're going to do it the old-fashioned way. Add them up, divide by 10, and I get 1.2 is my mean. For the median, put them in order, cross off equal size groups from each end. So the mean is 1.2 and the median is 1. Now, um, actually, since I've uh, done these notes, I've been to some more countries, but we'll keep it at 25. So I've been to at least 25 countries outside of the US, lucky me. Add this data point and calculate our new mean and our new median. So if I add it in, I had the 12 from here plus my 25, and now there are 11 of us. So that's 37 divided by 11 is 3.4. For the median, I'm going to go ahead, there's my 25 added on, cross off equal size groups, and my median is still 1. So which one changed? It's the mean. So outliers will have an effect on the mean. So the mean is affected by outliers, but the median is rarely affected. When there are outliers, the preferred measure of center is the median. All right. And then you can also use mean and median to kind of uh, figure out symmetry if you're sort of torn. So um, if you have a median there, I'm saying it's roughly around there, maybe half the data is on this side and half the data is on that side. Roughly could be like actually a little bit over here, but the means getting pulled over to the left by these low values. So that means my mean is less than my median and it's skewed to the left. So skew tells you which side the mean is on. Here it's very symmetric. The mean and the median are the same or very close to each other. And so that one is symmetric. Skewed to the right, I'm going to guess my median's about here, could be over here. And then I'm going to guess my mean is pulled up even higher by these really high values. So my mean is greater than my median. It is skewed right. So here's some geometry quiz grades. Let's go ahead and calculate the mean and the median. Added them all up, divided by 10. The mean is 83.8. The median, put them in ascending order. Take off equal size groups on each end. These are my two centermost points, so I average them. And I get 90.5. So just based on this, the mean is uh, lower than the median. So I'm going to guess that the data is skewed left because the mean is noticeably lower, lower than the median. That would be my basis. Now, it's always better to draw a picture, by the way, because it could just be, you know, the outliers kind of messing us up. We might have just the one outlier and it's not too bad. But outliers tend to skew your data. Okay, and that 50 really is skewing my data.